Uh, good, good. Uh, well, we've we've followed the stories. Is uh, is it true? Are the rumors true? Zach Greinke has been traded. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah, it's a tough day. Now, you know, you excited about getting three new players to your organization, but you also, you know, having to trade one of your best players. It's uh, it's always tough, and you know, but it was a result of how we played this year. So we turned the page and go out there, try to continue to win ball games. And I suppose that's got to be a. A tough call for a general manager and as you uh, are in these discussions and how about the Angels I mean where did the discussions begin with the Angels what kind of players are coming in return. Well we, we feel we got three pretty good players and Gene Segura a young shortstop played a double A he was in the big leagues with the Angels uh, here the past week or so and uh, John Helwig a big six foot eight right handed pitcher in double A. And Ariel Pena, a right-handed uh, pitcher, uh, big arm, was in the Futures game, and with Segura, both of them are in the Futures game. So we we feel we got three high-level prospects that uh, add to our organization. They're going to be on the they're on the 40-man roster. Uh, they've been in big league camp with the Angels, and uh, just add to the depth that we have at the upper levels in our organization. It had to, the phone lines must have lit up after that performance by Zach in Philadelphia on Friday. I mean, were, were teams kind of waiting to see where he was until he made that start? Yeah, I know there was a lot of talk about oh, they were concerned and why was he shut down and whatever. And I think it, it's evident that you know sometimes it's probably the smart thing to do is give some of the starting pitchers. A little bit of a break, a little bit of a breather in, in somewhere in June or July, and I think it really helped uh, Zach get back on track and uh, and that. But he had uh, that was an outstanding game. I was laughing with him here when I told him about the trade. If he got more excited about the pitching or the home run he hit, and he said he <laughs> thought he got it all. And as you know, Zach's a very approachable guy. I, I looked at him uh, somewhat like a son and. Uh, Love talking baseball with them. He used to come up to the draft room, and and he and Council would sit there and talk and go over players and argue about the, not argue but debate about young players. And first thing he wanted to know was who was he traded for because he knows the players and and that. So uh, you know he's a baseball junkie, and uh, as a general manager, you like those kind of players. So uh, you know I. I uh, Going to miss him as a player, both on the field because he's so talented. He's going to be a huge addition for the Angels. He's going to be a huge addition. As far as the, the phones and other calls, there was a number of teams that, that called, um, but I got it narrowed down to just two clubs at the end. Uh, there was probably four to five clubs, and uh, each day as time goes on, you try to narrow it down and uh, narrow the focus down so that you don't get distracted by clubs that maybe try to get in, involved mm -hmm. and. Uh, and that so it, it came down to two clubs very tough call for for both clubs and we had to, to push it to the limit to get the best deal. Well you mentioned the relationship you have with Zach Grinke does that give you hope that you might have a chance to resign Zach Grinke when it when it comes to the hot stove league I mean he obviously enjoyed his time here. He's well, made that public. I, uh, I, I told his agent to uh, before I told Zach that he was traded to keep us in mind I told him I can't say that after he's traded because <laughs> it's tampering. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Good point. So, but, yeah, you know, he, he he told me he really enjoyed it here. He enjoyed the the team. He said he had as much fun this year as he did last year too. Which, uh, you know, for some of our losses, it hasn't been a lot of fun. But I think it just goes to show you that uh, he still goes out there and he has a lot of fun fun playing the game. And that's what you have to do. You can't uh, can't keep that out of uh, focus. Of if you go out and play the game and have fun with it. It's an easier game to play. Yeah, most people think you know you have a guy like Zach Greinke, one of the better right-handers in baseball, and yeah, you just throw him out there and say, you know, what do you got for us from other teams? But it's kind of a pressure-type situation for the organization to make sure that you get the most that you can. And I think that perhaps is that why it took a while for uh, you to make the decision. Yeah, and you know the rules have changed this year. You know, there's no draft pick uh, um, for the Angels when they made the deal, so the teams that were involved had to really think hard and heavy through the process that. Um, you know they, they got who I consider the best pitcher that's out there and available but he's a difference maker he doesn't he, he's got a chance to take you you know the two or three levels that you need to get to a World Series and we fell two games short last year but we don't even get to that point without Zach Grinke. Uh, we gave up a really good package uh, to Kansas City you can see Escobar how he's coming along Kane's hitting 300 and Odorizzi's getting close to the big leagues 
And I knew that we probably couldn't get the same type of package back, but we got three very good players that I'm excited about, and our scouts are excited about. And, uh, um, you know, Craig, we sent Craig out on assignment to see Segura and, and, uh, and that, along with a couple other shortstop with organizations. Our focus was to try to get a shortstop. There's not a lot that were available, and uh, Gene Segura is a, a very talented, high energy guy, good speed, steals bases. I just talked to him, and he, we're going to send him to double A, and uh, he'll be there with uh, Helwig and Pena. And, uh, you know, we got some other good players coming along, and, um, and I had a manager, a uh, general manager, tell me today that we were talking, said that we, we have the best hitting ball club in the Southern League uh, with our Huntsville ball club, Scooter Jeanette and uh, Hunter Morris. And, and you add Segura there. You got three three fourths of our infield are real good prospects. Hunter Morris is having a phenomenal year in Double A, and uh, and then you add the arms of Helwig and Pena, um, you know, to the the pitching staff there. Hiram Burgos that's there, and uh, you know Thornburg started there earlier. So we've added some upper level depth to our organization, and it'll depend on the players and uh, and our development and and uh, how good of players they'll actually be. Let's uh, look forward to uh, you know what goes on here in Milwaukee now. You have a, a pitching spot in the rotation to fill on Sunday. What, what are the thoughts on that? Well, Mark Rogers will be here tomorrow, and he's going to pitch on Sunday, so um, give him an opportunity. And and uh, you know we believe in our young talent. We know that there's going to be some bumps in the road whenever you uh, go that path, but it's in the best interest of the long term of the organization in that. So. Uh, you know there'll be some short term bumps but we're still a very talented club and Zach Zach told me that he said there's still a lot of talent on this ball club and while we maybe had our bumps in the road with uh, some late inning losses uh, Zach liked the talent here and now we get some infusion of young talent coming along and uh, a lot of a uh, lot of pitching depth coming along so we'll uh, we're going to run some of them out there and uh, see what we have who thought Mike Byers would be right. doing what he's doing <laughs> at, at this point and who thought we never thought Tyler Thornburg would be up here at that particular time. Now Mark Rogers has gone out and had four out of five. Our last report for a couple of wow performances. And uh, he's ready. Willie Peralta over his last seven starts or so he had a one walk nine strikeout game last night and he, where he struggled earlier but now the arrows pointing up uh, for Willie Peralta. So um, some of those people we're going to get a chance to see. Well, Mike fires. With one away here in the second inning, Doug Melvin joining us, confirming the reports that uh, Zach Greinke has been traded. Greinke to the Angels. We showed you the particulars, and those three players will go to Double A. Any designs on eventually bringing them to the big leagues this season? September call-ups. Are you willing to go that far yet, or do you need to see what they're all about in your system? Yeah, we'll wait and see. You know, it's hard. You you really don't make promises on that because players could have injuries or their their performance. May not dictate that uh, as a call up, and, and they'll mix in with the other players, and they'll be treated like the other players in the organization to determine what we do in September. So I'm hoping to win as many games out here now, and uh, you know, you never know what can happen. Uh, I've seen teams, uh, the, the Astros, a year ago when they traded Pence, uh, Oswald, or a couple years ago, and they went out and won some ball games, and their club was energized. And I don't expect our club to to, to lay down either and go out and win games. So. Well, we have the good young players. We'll we'll determine that. We'll give them a chance to get comfortable with our organization, and for us to get comfortable with them. Now, when you announce a trade like that in the clubhouse, do you uh, make an announcement to the entire team, or is it uh, something that uh, Ron Renicki addresses, or how does that all go down with the team? Well, I, it came late here, so uh, I went down, told Zach, and we we obviously couldn't make an announcement until we knew it was finalized. There's a lot goes on when you agree upon the trade. You know, it was three hours ago, but you got a medical staff has to connect. Uh, the doctors have to connect. You uh, have to go through the contracts, make sure there's nothing there that uh, will cause a problem. So there's a lot of administrative mm -hmm. things that have to go on. So the most important thing was for me to go down and tell Zach, and I took great counsel down with me, and and uh, we talked to Zach with Ron Renneke, and then we told the coaching staff, and uh, you know, and then Zach knows obviously today with the players. But didn't have a chance. Our players were all spread out through the clubhouse. Right. Didn't get a chance to talk to them. But there'll be a point where uh, they'll go down and they may want to address them or Ron will want to address them. But uh, 
they know. I think there's 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 no secrets in baseball anymore. <laughs> well, and then by the way, we are as Mark Concannon reported, Zach Grinke is is uh, speaking to the media, and uh, down in the clubhouse. And of course, as soon as we have that tape, we'll bring it to you. We'll be able to hear Grinke's thoughts. And Doug Melvin joins us here in the booth. When was uh, the decision made for you? When was there a moment that you said, "Okay, I'm ready to go ahead and make a trade here"? You know, is there a specific game, a day? Is there something that you can point to that you made up your mind that you were going to trade Zach Greinke? Well, this last road trip obviously didn't didn't help. You know, when you went 0 and 6 on the road trip, um, you take a look. Uh, we looked at the schedules. We looked at who the Reds were going to have to play, the Pirates were going to have to play, and. And uh, we looked at the schedules. We, uh, we we took a look at our own ball club and and that. And uh, it wasn't so much the uh, the timing of what we really thought, because I still like to think that we can go out and win ball games mm -hmm. and get back in a pennant race. But the trade deadline only allows you a week to make a decision. So if you uh, bypass that decision, you could lose out on on, on a lot here. And uh, we just felt that there was an opportunity to to, to maximize. The ability to bring back some players, you know, with with Zach and and uh, he was in tune with what's going on and, and that. So um, we just had to make that decision. And but the road trip obviously didn't didn't help uh, uh, with that. Well, Mike fires with two outs, a one-two count on Leon, and down he goes. A strikeout for Fires. Well, Doug, thanks a lot for coming up. Thank and, you, uh, Brian.